demonstration of the CINAHL database as configured for use by Trinity College Library Dublin. Today we'll be looking at how to access CINAHL, set up an account, search for particular subjects, combine those searches, save individual results and the searches themselves, and how to find the full text available. So there's a number of different ways to get into CINAHL. For instance, you can type in CINAHL here and go into Stellar and get a direct link into it that way, or you can start the Nursing and Midwifery Librarian subject page. This is useful as it has a complete guide to how to use CINAHL. Just click on that to show you that, that there. Um, it's a PDF which you can download and print out and works you through all the things we'll be looking at in this particular video. Okay, so that's kept up to date when there are changes made to CINAHL. To access CINAHL itself, we click here and it takes us to a page in the classic catalog showing us a link into it. That's as far as you'll be able to get without logging in as Trinity College with your network username and password. So I'm going to click there, I'm on campus so I don't need to log in, and I'm into CINAHL itself. So CINAHL is the main nursing and midwifery database. CINAHL stands for Cumulative Index of Nursing and Allo Health Literature. So it's provided by this company, EBSCO. Uh, they also provide access to PsycInfo and a number of other databases. So before we go any further, we're going to sign in. This will enable us to save our searches and results as we want to. So just click there, sign in. Now I've already set up an account, but if you haven't done that before, you need to create a new account there. It is not automatically linked to your Trinity username and password. Okay, so you would click on create a new account and you would decide all the information going in here. You can use your Trinity email address, you can use your Facebook password, whatever you want, and then save changes and then continue. So I've already done this, so I don't need to sign up for one again. I just click on sign in and I'm going to put in my username there. So I'm just going to sign in. Da, 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 da. There we go, and it's now seeing me as being signed in. Okay, so we're going to search for a couple of subjects. Normally, when you are given a research question, it can be broken into two or three different parts. How does something affect something else? Okay, so today we're going to be looking to see does increased hand hygiene decrease the incidence of MRSA in a clinical setting? So we've got two different aspects of that search the hand hygiene part and the MRSA part. So what I'm going to do first of all is look for hand hygiene. Now you may want to have a think about whether the terms you've been given are actually the correct ones to type in. What do we actually mean by hand hygiene? And I would suggest that the main part of that is actually hand washing. And when we type in hand hygiene it will actually suggest hand washing is the term. But how are you even spelling hand washing? Is it one word, two words, two words with a hyphen? Well the great thing about doing a subject search like this is it will give you everything on that subject no matter how it was spelled in the article or even if those terms didn't um, show up at all. So I'm going to do a search for that and as we will see it says yes hand hygiene use hand washing spelt as one word that's fine. Now it's giving us lots of suggestions here. So these are suggestions based on the words that we've typed in so most of them to do with the hand there. Now you may not know what all these things mean for a lot of them there's a little thing there called a scope note, it looks like a speech bubble and if you click on that, so for instance this one here, alien hand syndrome, was suggested because we typed in the word hand. If I look at that, what is alien hand syndrome? It was very interesting. Now it's a good idea to click on the scope note if there is one, even if you do know what the subject is about and it's the one you're looking for because it will give you other suggestions of other things to look for and to combine into your search. Now if you click on the word there, so I'm going to click on hand washing, it get, takes you to a kind of family tree where it shows you related terms and similar um, types of things to do with that particular phrase. So I'm going to click on hand washing there and here we are at a family tree as it were. So hand washing is a type of infection control which is a type of public health and hand washing has its own subheading surgical scrubbing. I'm just going to scroll down so you can see them there. So I know I want all the things to do with hand washing and if I want to include its subheadings, in this case surgical scrubbing, I need to explode it. So explode means include all the subheadings. So what this is effectively going to do is search for hand washing or surgical scrubbing. So that's fine. I can click on search database here and it's now going to give me a list of all the articles which it has found in CINAHL to do with hand washing. Okay, so we can have a look at that. Now I'm seeing 50 on that page if I scroll down. That's because I've made a change to my preferences before I did this. So I click on preferences there and what you want to do here is change results per page from 10 to 50. 
and also sort by to database default which is in date order in this particular database and then click on save so now these articles are going to be listed in date order date descending order so new ones at the top and there will be 50 on the page but we can't stop there that's too many articles to look through I'm not going to look through four and a half thousand I need to do a search the next strand of my particular question which is to do with MRSA so type in MRSA there at the top there and it's saying MRSA use methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus seems fairly straightforward that's what I want to do um, does that have any subheadings no I can tell it doesn't have any subheadings because I can't explode it I can't make that tick there so you could say right I'm just going to tick to the left of it there and do a search for that there okay I haven't clicked on the scope node because I, I know what it means so we'll see if that was the right thing to do in a second click on search database and that should hopefully give me everything to do with MRSA but has it though that seems a little bit low there now if I look on the left hand side if I scroll down a bit you can see there it's showing me the earliest date for anything to do with MRSA in this database is 2007 and that's just not right um, so why is that showing me that basically what happened is it used to say if you typed in MRSA use staphylococcal infections MRSA is a type of staph infection so all the earlier stuff was listed under that particular uh, subject it was only in about 2008 that they came up with a new subject specific methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus so all the new stuff is listed under that but they can't go back and redo all of the older material so we have to do that search again we'll do MRSA again and this is why it's important to click on the scope note even if you think you know what something is talking about because if I click on that it says to coordinate with staphylococcal infections okay and if I click on that for the staph infections it says to do the other way other way for MRSA as well so we know that staphylococcal infections does have subheadings because I could explode it there but whether I want to or not is another matter to see what those subheadings are I need to click on it so click on staphylococcal infections there I know I want staphylococcal infections but do I want these subheadings frunculosis in vitigo and I don't because they're nothing to do with MRSA so in this particular case I'm not going to explode it so search database and there we are so I've got three searches now one for hand washing and its subheadings and then two for methicillin resistant staphylococcal aureus and staphylococcal infections now there's still stuff being put under the staph infection subject heading because there are new ones being written which aren't to do with MRSA but are to do with other staph infections so that's why there's still stuff coming up there um, which is quite new now what we're going to do now is combine these two searches here so I want to combine them because I don't care whether it's this one or this one that it gives me I want to make a kind of super search for the concept of MRSA so you need to know is it search with and or search with or and the way to remember this is or is more if you use or between particular subjects it will give you either of them not both of them generally it can mention one or the other so that will generally give you far more results than just searching for one of them at a time so I'm going to I'll tick those two there search with or and it gives me a kind of super search then for the concept of MRSA okay so now what I can do is combine that search with the hand washing aspect of it and because those are different concepts I use search with and okay and I'm down to 308 results there and if I can scroll through there they are so what I can do now is just basically have a look at the titles there to see if they look like they're interesting if you mouse over this little icon there it gives you a bit more information about it if there is um, an abstract available there isn't for any of those ones it will show it to you there okay so let's try and find one an abstract hopefully so click on the other one try that one yeah and there it's showing me the abstract so the newer they are the less they tend to have the abstract with them because it hasn't been written yet it hasn't been brought into the database so if you like the look of them what you would do is click on add to folder and this will store them in the folder we signed into earlier so I'm just going to do that for the first five okay and I'm just going to put them into my folder add to folder and because I've got subfolders set up in my folder that's why it's offering me a choice of where to put them so I'm just going into my general folder there so what this is doing is just saving those 
references. It's not saving the actual full text or anything like that. For some of these, we don't know whether we can access the full text. Some of them it's giving the full text straight away, but not for all of them. So what we can now do is we could go into our folder. So you work your way through all of the results, put the ones to one side you want, you want to try and get the full text of. And I'm going to see, can we access this? Well, if I click on it, it gives me all the information about it. So all the subjects. So it's a lot about these subjects. These are the major headings. It's a bit about these subjects. These are the minor headings. OK. So this can give you information about other things you may want to look for, like cross infection might be something to look for, that sort of thing. So we can see, well, OK, well, what is this from? Which journal is this from? This is from the American Journal of Infection Control. Do we have access to that? Well, to see if we do, we click on Check TCE Journals. It will open a new tab called the Link Resolver tab. And we just cross our fingers here, hope it's all going to load. And hopefully what we'll see is that we have access to that through full text. So we can see that we do have access to the full text there. So what I'm going to do is just click on where it says view this article at Science Direct. So click there and hopefully it will take us straight to it. Sometimes it takes you straight to it. Sometimes it takes you to the journal homepage and then have to find it using the volume number, the, the pages, that sort of thing. But here it's taking us straight to it. So there is the full text, all lovely and available. So that's great to read on the screen. That's what's called the HTML version, which is probably the best one to read on the screen. If you're looking for uh, to print it out or to save it, you go for the PDF version. OK, so just to show you, that's the PDF version there. And that's exactly how it would look if you printed it out um, or sorry, photocopied it from the, the real journal, the, the, the print journal, as it were. OK, so that's fine, but it's not so easy to read on the screen because you have to keep scrolling up and down. So I generally go for the HTML version if I want to read it straight away or the PDF version if I want to read it later. OK, so that's great. I can close those tabs now and I'm back into my folder. So that's all well and good. Um, we found about 300 results there. Now, that's not a huge amount of results, but you may want to narrow that down a bit. If instead of getting 300, we got 800, you would probably need to narrow that down to a smaller number. So there's different ways you can do that. If I just click on New Search, you can always click on New Search to get back to where you were at the start. So I could search for something completely different and add that into our search. So I'm going to search for, say, Ireland. And this will give us everything on the subject of Ireland within this database. If you don't care whether it's uh, Ireland or Northern Ireland, you can tick both of them there. Okay, so I'm going to do an all Ireland search for this, as it were. And what it's going to do is put or between them. If you tick more than one thing on this page, it puts or between those particular things. Okay, so we don't care whether it's Ireland or Northern Ireland search database. How many results are there for that? Okay, so there's over 10,000 results at the moment for stuff to do with the island of Ireland. So now what I can do is add that into that search because there are different things I can use and. Now there's not going to be a huge amount. There's only four hits there. So you wouldn't want to be writing a PhD thesis on just four results there. But you might include these four in any um, list of references that you want to use. Okay, because they are about where we're from. Now if you look there, good Irish names. And quite often you will recognize who the authors are because they might be at Trinity. OK, another way to narrow things down would be to put limits on it. So if I go to that 308 one there, so if I click on view results, I might want to say that I only want ones, scroll down, so there are the 308 showing, I only want ones which are peer reviewed and in English. So to do that, under where it says refine your results on the left hand side there, click on show more. And it gives me the option here to narrow it down to say to English language and peer reviewed. I click on search, it reruns the search and shows me how many there are now. So we had 308 before, now we're down to 243. Okay, that's all well and good. Um, how many of them are from the last 10 years? Well, you can use this slider to narrow it down by date. So, and then what will happen is hopefully um, something will show up saying, please update this now. Okay, so I'm just gonna find that in a second. Okay, so it's saying, well, what do you want to do? update that yes so now again it will rerun that search and show me just the ones from the last 10 years and it's telling me all this here okay so we had 308 four of those are to do with Ireland or Northern Ireland we had 308 243 are in English and peer-reviewed 308 202 are published in the last 10 years in English and peer-reviewed 
there's another way that you can narrow down um, your searches which is to make perhaps one of the subjects what's called a major concept okay so if you thought the hand washing aspect was the main thing that you want your article to concentrate on you could do that search again so I'm just going to do a quick search for hand washing now again so just copy that put it in and this time what I'm going to do is narrow it down so it has to be a lot about that so I'm going to explode it I already know what the subheading is it's surgical scrubbing but now I'm going to make those have to be major concepts okay so you take major concept here search database and what this means is that when you look at those results hand washing or surgical scrubbing has to be listed here that these are the major concepts again if I click on that say it will show me all the different concepts so it has to be listed in the major subjects it can't be one of these minor subjects okay so don't ever do that for the term island because island is never going to be one of the main things that's something about countries are always used as one of the minor subjects okay so that's a, a fairly quick run through of that if you ever get lost and just want to see where what you're you've done already click on search history that will automatically show up when you're in your results but here we are some things that we've done so far and it might be that you don't particularly want one of those searches so you can just delete any of the ones that you don't want and you are sure you want to continue okay now we've saved individual results out of our search which is fine but you may want to save the entire search itself so you can rerun that at a later date all in one go and see how many you're getting at that time okay so today this is this is our best search as you, if you will grade equals 202 but in a week's time that might be 203 204 whatever so what we're going to do is save the entire search and this will only work if you are signed in so I am signed in you see me up there so you click on save searches alerts here and this allows you to save that particular search so the best thing to do is type in exactly what it was that you were looking for so that when you see this later you know what it was about so I'm going to type in uh, hand washing and MRSA and it's also a good idea to put in the date so today when I'm doing this is the 19th of the 4th 13 because when you do this later date although that is showing up there that won't show in your list of things and it's a very useful thing just to differentiate searches because if you keep running the same search and making small tweaks you don't want to have to keep renaming it as such but you can just change the date in the name so you know that the one with the latest date is the best search and then click on save right and then continue so what I'm gonna now see is a list of all the searches that I've I've saved lots and lots as you can see from doing this over the years and doing this with students so for instance I have an MRSA and hand washing search there from 2010 here I have one from 2012 here I have one from 2011 and I have lots of different ones there the one which I've just done there should be there under hand washing and MRSA so there we are that's the one I've just done there so if I click on retrieve save search it will actually add it on to what's already there so I'd have the same search appearing twice so perhaps the best way to use um, save searches is right at the start okay so I'm going to close Sinal okay I'm just going to go back to my way into Sinal here so I'm going to go into Sinal again from scratch okay the first thing I do when I go into Sinal is sign in so I'm going to sign in very quickly now okay so I don't have anything in my search history because I closed it down earlier but what I do have them still in my folder so I click on folder there and I can see the individual results which I've saved into it okay but I can also go into my save searches here on the left hand side so I click on that now just to show you I have a search here called Agnes which I did for someone called Agnes but unless I actually rerun it I've got no idea when I did it or what it was about so that's why it's a good idea to give search is meaningful names so that you can actually see when you did them and what they're about so here I have that one I just saved there retrieve save search okay so there is all my searches back there but it's not showing me how many I got for them it wants me to rerun them because it I should realize that I might be getting more at this stage than I did in the past so the easy way to rerun them is just do select deselect all and then refresh search results Okay, and it shows me how many there are today now this is all well and good but not everything will be listed as a subject 
Okay, so for certain things, you can't do the subject searching. The reason why it does subject searches, and I'll just make it look like it did at the start there, um, is because this box tick by default suggests subject terms. Now, that's normally the most powerful way to search because you don't have to think of every um, different way a term can be described. You can find whether that's a subject, and then it'll search for everything on that particular topic for you automatically. But you can't do that for everything. So quite often people are looking for people's experiences or perceptions or attitudes or something. And those don't tend to be the sort of things which are listed as subjects. So the way to do that is to make them search for individual words using or between them. But you need to think what those words actually are. So if you're looking for people's experiences of something, it won't always be the word experience. It might be, or sorry, experiences. It might be experience or experiencing or perception or view or views or viewpoint or whatever. So you might try and do a bit of a brainstorming exercise for that and write those down in a Word document. So I'm looking for experiences of whatever. So I put this into a Word document and I have this here. And if you type or OR between them in capitals, you can literally just cut and paste that in to any database and run it. Okay, so I've copied that there. So I'm now going to untick suggest subject terms there because I wanted to find the exact words which I'm going to put in now. Paste that in and now search. Okay, so it runs it. So there's a lot of articles which have those words somewhere in it. But now I'm going to add those in to that last search there. So search with and. So, and again, just to see all of the um, results there, I'm just going to do select all and refresh search result, but I'm sure continue. Okay, so of those 202, 12 have one or more of those words listed there. And if I, if I just click on view results, it will show me those 12. So that's a, a very easy way to add in particular words if you think, yes, it does have to use these particular terms. Okay. And if I wanted to save that slightly amended one there, okay, because I was doing it in the same day, I can't just uh, change the date to it. But that looks to be fair enough to me. Click on save, and there we are. And continue. Okay, and if you ever get stuck, just click on new search and you're back to the very beginning. Okay, and that is how to use Synalp. Now, you may be asked to print out your search history. So, what you've typed in, where you've been, that sort of thing. So, your search history is a bit different to your search strategy. Your search strategy is where you describe what you did. You, you identify the relevant keywords, um, that you look for synonyms, that sort of thing. And combine them using and and or as appropriate. But your search history is pretty much what you typed in. So this is my search history for this particular search. And the easiest way to do this is just click on where it says print search history. And that will now give you a, a nice version of it, which doesn't have all the formatting there. So I'm just going to resize that down. Oops, sorry. Resize that. Just so it fits on my screen there. OK. A bit more. And what you'd be doing then is if you've been told to put this into your Word document, you can just highlight that as appropriate, copy it, and then paste it in. And it will come in formatted like that. OK, so that was a very quick run through of Synalp. I hope you found that useful. Um, you can always contact us here in the library if you need further help. So best of luck and thanks for your attention.